makes me understand that sometimes the problem is is that those who are around us can make us sometimes or break us sometimes we can be influenced by those who we consider to be those who know what they're talking about and when there are those that you don't really have confidence in you look at them like they're strange you know how it is when there's some people tell you what God has done for them you look at them and you say mm -mm -mm -mm. and especially if they are not in the group of those that you respect if they are not in that group of those that you consider to be credible you look at them and you say but you got to understand that the Lord is not limited to do anything that he said if nobody believes him. And you got to understand that because somebody that you don't know or you don't think is credible tell you something great that God has done, it doesn't mean that God did not do it. It just may mean that your problem is your expectancy of him doing great things for that individual is very low so what we need to do is to raise our expectancy level we got to get an expectancy meter and begin to raise it to a higher level and I was thinking about how do you get people to raise their level of expectancy well the testimony of those who have experienced him is supposed to be good enough you're supposed to be able to say I witness account is supposed to be all that you need you see I ain't got to be able to see the Lord raise somebody from the dead before I believe that he raises people from the dead I ain't got to see God heal cancer before I believe that he's able to heal cancer I'm supposed to be able to believe what somebody has said so in my text when they did not believe it was a serious problem that tells me that what the enemy did to them it was working he wanted to create such a fear and such turmoil that they wouldn't be able to believe that Jesus could get out of this when they saw him beat and when they saw him slapped and when they saw him thrust with the spear and when they saw the nails in his hand it just seemed to be so incredible it seemed to be so incredible to believe that anybody could get up from this it seemed to be incredible that anybody that could take and lose as much blood as he lost and be treated as bad as he was treated that he could even dare to get up from that kind of experience they felt 
in their minds it's over everything that we've done with Jesus is finished he cannot get up from this they were so sure that this is impossible but what they forgot is that you are never supposed to get to a place with God that you think that something God said he was going to do he can't do it you're never supposed to get to the place where you think that something is too impossible with God they forgot about connecting the word to what he said and that's like us sometimes we forget to connect the word with what he said we look at the impossibility that ain't no way this can change ain't no way somebody could be this sick and still get up from that bed ain't no way that somebody can suffer like they suffered and still be healed if you ever watch somebody suffer can you know what i'm talking about if you ever watch somebody suffer and you sit there and see them suffer you get to the point where you start hoping that they die because you're saying I'm sorry I'm sad I don't want to see them go through what they go through but we forget that that's sometimes the very thing that God allows before he ever works a miracle and that's when we have to learn that because you see something that's horrible you're not supposed to forget the word that what Jesus said and you remember the word when Jesus was born the Bible said in his birth that says the moment he was born that with God all things are possible which meant the day that Jesus was born it was supposed to raise the level of everybody on the earth and begin to recognize that God was doing a new thing and that God was bringing impossibilities and making them possible and he was taking situations that people thought couldn't happen he was making those things happen but when you get disconnected from the word of God how can you have faith in what God said because faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God so the problem with their faith was they didn't have the word with their faith they had lost the word they forgot about what the word said so even when they said we saw him they didn't remember that he said in his word in three days I'm going to get up. They forgot what he said in his word. And that's brothers and sisters is the thing that we got to remember is not just the testimony of what somebody say. It's the word that's connected to the testimony. It's the word of God that said that God said he can do it. Isn't it not true when he came through Abraham and he said to Abraham, he says that I'm going to give you a son. Did not Abraham laugh? Did not Sarah laugh? They was disconnected to what he had previously promised. You see, when you get disconnected from the word, that's how you don't get 
say. You remember what he says in John? He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. So what was wrong with the apostles? They said, I heard what you say, but I ain't got no word on the matter. That's why the evil ones could still believe that something was going to happen because they remembered the word of what he said. But those who were serving him had saw too much until they forgot the word of what he said. But I want to tell somebody today that's looking at a situation and it looks impossible. I just want to tell you what the word said. I'm not just trying to get you to have faith in him without giving you the word to believe because faith comes by hearing but not just hearing hearing by the word of God you see I want you to understand that when the Lord came to Abraham he spoke a word to Abraham and said is there anything to hide God for God. And I want you to look at your neighbor real quick and tell him I want to ask you a question about what you're going through, about what you're experiencing that seem to be difficult. I got a word for you. What shall we then say to these things? I got a word for you. If God be for you, I got to give you a word. Look at somebody said, you gave me your testimony, but I need a word from the Lord. I need a word that tells me that God is going to do that for me. Can I preach a few minutes? I feel like preaching. You got to understand that there can never really be faith without a word and that's why when we're going through something sometimes we don't have faith because we've lost the word but I want to ask has there anybody seen the word of the Lord is there anybody got a word from God then if you got a word from God then I want you to look at that person around you and say the word of God says all things things are possible with God. Tell them real quick. Tell them all things. He said whatever thing you're wrestling with, all things are possible. I didn't think I was going to preach this morning. I planned to do a little talk, but I feel like preaching right now because I want somebody to understand that the enemy is trying to do us like he did the disciples to low our expectancy to make us believe that we got situations that God can't bring us out of but I got news for you and I got news for the devil your mojo don't work over here I've already been to the water I've already been baptized I got the Holy Ghost I got the power of the risen Christ and I ain't gonna let you tell me what God cannot do because I've seen him too many times I've seen God in the midnight when it looked like ain't nothing gonna happen I've seen God show up and just show out and I got news for somebody that there's not a problem that God can't help you with there's not a situation that God can't deliver you in I want you to help me to encourage somebody because that's what the Lord told Moses he said before you leave here I want you to encourage Joshua and there's some people in here today that's been going through something and the more you look at it it's just like the apostles it 
look like ain't nothing good happen. And the more you sit in it, the worse it makes you feel. You just want the night to get over. But I got news for you. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I don't care how long the night seemed to be. That's joy in the morning. I don't care how long the situation is. God is able. The Bible said there's a question. They asked God when he was in the wilderness. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? And the answer ought to be yes. Sometimes you don't understand that when people are facing something, they've been sitting in it for a long time and it seemed to be immovable. It seemed to be impossible. But I got news for somebody. I rose up to tell you he was in the grave for three days, but he got up Sunday morning. If he got up Sunday morning, he can get you up to whatever you're going through. I don't care how hard it is. He's able to deliver you. He's able to bring you through. So in my text, Mary told a testimony and they couldn't see it. And then there were two men that were walking on the road. They call it the Emmaus Road. And while they were walking, they said it thought. We thought it was going to be him. But then he messed up and died. And ever since he died, we've been messed up by it. I want to ask somebody that's what's going, that's going through something. Doesn't it seem like that sometimes? Don't it seem just like that? Look like you can handle your situation until it looks like it's the worst. And when it gets to the worst, that's when you seem to feel like I just want it to be over. But I came to tell somebody that there was a time in the word when the Bible said that Paul and Silas was in the jail house. And while they were in the jail, the Bible declared while in the jail, after being beat, after being thrashed, and while in the jail with the hands in the stocks and look like it was all over for her. the Bible said at midnight Paul and Silas began to pray and the same prayers and at midnight look at your neighbor and said midnight might be going on with you right about now you might have cancer and it feels like a midnight you might have a lost loved one and it feels like a midnight you might have look like pressure and bills that is like a midnight you might be at foreclosure you might be down and wallowing in depression but the Bible said at midnight Paul and Silas began to pray and after they got through praying they began to sing song and they began to bless the Lord I want to tell somebody if you're dealing with impossibility and if you're dealing with a situation where it looks like you're not going to get out of it I dare you to start praying about it I dare you to start asking God to help you asking God to deliver you because I got a word for you the Bible said God is our refuge and strength and then the Bible 
Bible declare in that day we shall boldly say that the Lord is our helper. I want to tell somebody that feels like it's impossible. The Bible said we shall boldly, we shall boldly say the Lord is our helper. I want you to look at your neighbor and say get bold. On resurrection morning you need to get bold. We've been too passive. We've been acting like he didn't get up. We've been acting like he ain't got power. But this is our morning to put our heads up in the air and say devil you a liar. He got up from the grave and I shall boldly declare that the Lord is my helper. Look at your neighbor and said if you need help stop being scared to get bold about it and boldly say boldly declare the Lord is my helper I need about three people to tell somebody with low expectancy get your head up lift up your head oh ye gates and be ye lifted up ye everlasting door and the king of glory shall come in look at somebody and say he is the glory and the lifter of your head he is the one that will lift you up so I got to preach this the Lord said when Jesus rose when he died on the cross the graves of the saints they open up because of resurrection power if the graves can open up don't tell me your situation I said don't tell me your situation can't receive a downpour of his power I'm just about ready to close but I got to tell somebody the Bible said we go from glory to glory we go from faith to faith what you need to do in your situation is start shouting glory what you need to do in your situation is start saying to God glory and somebody said Pastor Rogers why do you want us to say glory because it's gonna be a glorious victory because it's gonna be a glorious miracle because it's gonna be a glorious blessing and what you need to do is to look back at your grave and do like Jesus and say oh grave where is your victory and say like Jesus when he spoke to death he said oh death where is thy sting grab somebody by the hand and say if you're going through something shout glory if you got a problem shout glory but the Bible declares that whatever you're going through is for the praise and the glory of God so whatever problem you got God says in a little while I'm gonna get some glory out of it in a little while I'm gonna raise you up and when I raise you up it's gonna be a testimony that tell everybody can't nobody do you like Jesus can't nobody I got 
to preach but before I said I want a few people to tell your neighbor it's gonna be glory glory me I don't know how he's gonna do it but he's gonna get the glory out of it I don't know how he's gonna pay my bill but he's gonna get the glory out of it I don't know how he's gonna heal my body but I he's gonna get the glory out of it help me shout glory help me shout glory Jesus when he went on the Emmaus road he said ought not Christ to suffer what are you trying to say pastor you don't want to suffer but every one of us got to understand that that's the part of believing in Christ you got to suffer tell your neighbor stop crying about your suffering but the Bible declares if we suffer with him we shall also reign you ain't going through nothing unless you're gonna get a crown if you go through trouble there's a crown somewhere shall glory I said shall glory so in my conclusion as I get ready to go to my seat I want some glory preacher some glory seekers I want some glory praises I want some glory shouters but the Bible said you're not supposed to wait until you get to victory the Bible said clap your hands and shout with the voice of triumph I dare you I said I dare you I dare you to think about who you are this morning and think about how great God is and open up your mouth and give him a shout of victory shout victory I said shout victory shout it three times shout victory shout victory shout victory and then shout glory 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 shout glory I gotta sit down but before I sit down I heard him say on the Emma's road oh